Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Barbara Kirsch. She's one of the leaders of the prayer group, St. John the Baptist, Ferntree Gully. Hello, Geraldine. How are you? <laughs> welcome back. That's good. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love for those who don't know you to share a little bit about yourself and how you came to Jesus. Well, I went to a, a wedding. Um, I think I touched on that before. And this man came and prayed with me mm. and it was exhilarating because being a Catholic, when he said, let's go into the bedroom and pray, I thought, well, we'll kneel down. So I knelt down. <laughs> I thought we'll say the Our Father, the Hail Mary and go back and have a glass of wine. <laughs> but he closed the door after himself and I'm sitting on the bed and I thought, oh, my God, I've got this gorgeous looking guy. <laughs> I was only 40 <laughs> and um, he put his hands on my head. It was like electricity went through wow. my whole body and my life changed. That's the Holy Spirit. Mm. Totally changed that day because the Holy Spirit touched my heart and my life's never been the same and, since. And so you really experienced God as so, so real in your life. Well, I knew Jesus, but now I knew the Holy Spirit. And it was power. And he introduced me to the Father. Wow. So I know all three of them now. Oh, wow. What do you experience as God the Father? Well, God the Father, I found, was a little bit hard to get to know. And I know our Pentecostal friends are really in tune with God the Father. Oh. And in as much as I have a Pentecostal uh, pastor as a son, you know, uh, I went to their church a lot and I loved it how they spoke to the Father. And I mm. said, I want to know the Father as well. Mm. And Sister Magella, she introduced me to, to God the, the Father God. of God mm. oh. and uh, a devotion to him. Mm. So, yes, I'm wrapped. That's fantastic. And, um, and you experience God's love too? Of course, mm. yes. That's what it's all about, is love. And what's love. God, God's love like? Does he only love us when we're doing the right thing? No. He goes, you've done the wrong thing again. And then he gives you a hand up. Yeah, so, you. And you feel embarrassed. You think, oh, no, I've done that again. <laughs> oh, But he's very, very good. He gives us that lift. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so Father, Son and Holy Spirit, if I'm really wanting something... I pray, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then I've got a chain of saints as well. So wow. if you're Pentecostal, you won't be au fait with saints. But I got au fait with your God the Father, <laughs> so come on board. Yes, because St. Joseph in particular is very, very beautiful for me. Yes. yes. Very beautiful. Yes, there's a beautiful book um, on St. Joseph out at the moment. Yes, that's good. Yes. And you've also experienced God as a God of miracles. The Frank, the guy who prayed for me that day, said the Lord is going to give you a gift of miracles, of healing, of prophecy, words of knowledge. I didn't know what he was talking about. Wow. But I look back and I travelled overseas. 27 years I went overseas and prayed with people. Wow. And I saw miracle after miracle. Wow. That's fantastic. And uh, you had a miracle of someone in a wheelchair. Yes, at uh, the Mount of Beatitudes. Wow. And it was terrible, really. We were all up there kneeling and praying. And this man, he had um, men helping him because it, it is a hill. And he fell out of the wheelchair. Oh, no. And he couldn't get back in, so everything stopped while everybody helped him in. And that night I was called to the hotel he was staying in, not for him, for a lady who had diarrhoea. Mm. And I went and I prayed for her. Mm. And when I came back, they said, why don't you pray for him? Mm. And I said, well, OK, let's all pray. And I was with my prayer partner, Mary Graffio, mm. and we prayed. 
And the next thing you know is this man, after he'd been in a wheelchair seven whole years, seven years, wow. got up and danced with me. That's amazing. Now, in amongst all those people was a chiropractor. Yep. And he said to me, that's impossible. Wow. He mustn't have been in a wheelchair. He must have just been Bit sitting a in a wheelchair. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because his muscles would not be able to dance. Yeah, that's amazing. But believe me, and Mary's been to France, mm. and now he's working full time. And mm. he said it's only when he works too much does his legs start to feel tired. Mm. And he knows he's done too much and he eases off. Mm, wow. And the wheelchair is still in this hotel. <laughs> and every time Mary goes there all the time to Israel, they say, and what do you want to do about that wheelchair? And she said, we told you, get rid of it. And it's a Muslim hotel. <laughs> and on that night, the manager of the hotel said to me, I suffer from migraines. Will you pray that well, my migraines, and every time we went and stayed, at that hotel, which was many times, mm. he'd say, I have never had a migraine since. Oh, wow. And I go, praise God. So he doesn't pick and choose who he's going to That's right. heal. That's right. Well, it says in it the It doesn't scriptures. matter what we are. He's our God and That's he right. heals He us. loves us and he wants to do Yes. I mean, they say, you know, um, you have not because you ask not. So we, exactly. So in the next, um, yeah, after the break, we're going to, get you to say some prayers for people because, mm. you know, we want miracles because we have a God who loves us. Yes. Yes. And, and, and a God who loves us unconditionally, which is, you know, I can see the joy in your heart. Yes. And the love <laughs> because we have so much love, we feel our hearts bursting. Yes. You, you love so many people. That's the, the gift God has given you, hasn't yes. it? Yes. And, and that, in a sense reflects God's love so that God people will know God's love through your love for them. Well, they're attracted to love. We're all attracted to love. Yes. So we will go for a break. And then after that, I'd love you to say a prayer for the audience. Good. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Barbara Kirsch. She's one of the prayer group leaders of St. John the Baptist Church Prayer Group. Welcome back, Barbara. Hello, Geraldine. Yes, um, you were talking about um, miracles and having a relationship with Jesus. Mm. And how is help getting a relationship with Jesus, how does that help? one to have a good self-identity well first of all you have to give your life to jesus with mm. no reserves mm. just give your whole life to jesus and then once you've invited him into your life well the sky's the limit and what does he offer what what does he offer i mean a lot of people think oh you know if i come to jesus then i'm gonna to have to go to church and it's gonna i'm gonna be boring and dull and 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 not do any fun things. What do you say to someone like that? Well, I can tell you that going to church is a fun thing. So um, I'm a Catholic, and so I go to the Catholic church, and I go every day. I'm very blessed to have mm -hmm. yes to have Father Kevin Dillon as our priest, who is an absolutely wonderful pastor. Wow. And um, But I also have a son who is a pastor. And so I've been to his church and many other Pentecostal churches. And wherever I go, I feel like I've just fitted in and I wow. love it. Yes. You're, you seem to have a lot of joy. Well, that's one of the gifts that the Lord gives you. He's full of gifts. And... All we have to do is accept them. Mm. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's true. And you have gone through suffering too. Yes, I've had many things wrong with me over the years. But I just go, I'm not having that. 
I say, Lord, I'm not having that. I'm mm. not going to have that. And um, it's amazing. I was only last year, I was on an operating table mm. and they had to do it with ultrasound. Mm. So the two people with the ultrasound were standing by. Mm. Now, I wasn't the only one praying. I had my prayer group praying as well. Mm. They're very good prayer warriors. Yeah. And um, it was an awful thing that they had to do. They did it um, about five years before. Into the nodules, they have to put this needle and they can't give you anaesthetic. Ooh. And there were five points that they had to put in, hence the ultrasound. Ah. In comes the top doctor. Mm. And she said, yes, yes, well, show me what it is. And then she said, so what's wrong with this woman? So I go, <laughs> and she looks at me, yes. I said, well, I've got the paperwork and it tells everything that's wrong with me. Mm. And she said, I'm not asking you, I'm asking them. And I <laughs> went, right, I know my place, shut up. So I <laughs> shut up. And she said, show me the first one, the one's supposed to be cancerous. Mm. Wow. That's not cancer and went through the five. Wow. And then I had the cheek to say, I'm going, thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you. And then I said, oh, well, in as much as I didn't have anything done to me, well, then I, 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 the gap was $485, so you don't expect me to pay the gap, do you? <laughs> and they went, well, we've been working on you for an hour. And I said, you haven't done anything. <laughs> So I got off, got dressed, got in my car and drove home. <laughs> oh, wow. <That's> an... <laughs> and all the way I was praising God, oh, the Lord. That's great. God worked a miracle and removed all the cancer. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And so I would like you to be able to pray for the audience of what you feel God would like you to pray for them. Okay. Well, well let's just close our eyes. So almighty Lord Jesus Christ, you know everyone, everyone that's watching right now and everybody's got their cross. We've just said that. It may be health. It may be a, a money problem. It could be depression because of COVID. It could be any of a thousand things. But you know exactly what's wrong. So I would like to pray for my brothers and sisters, that healing will take place. And I just ask now, Lord Jesus Christ, that your word says, by your stripes, you will be healed. And I believe that you are being healed right at this moment. And if you're feeling a tingle or some feeling in that part of your body, our Lord is working. So we ask Father, Son and Holy Spirit to come into their lives more fully, to heal them. And we ask this in the most precious of all names. Jesus Christ, amen. Wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yeah, so we, we, uh, we are thankful to the Lord for the miracles because it, it says in the name of Jesus, God heals. In the name of Jesus, evil flees too. Exactly. Yes. Uh, have, you, have you had any experience of, the, well, the Christians call it the enemy or the negative spirit or the evil spirit. How do Christians fight that negative spirit, that evil spirit? Well, in the Catholic Church, we are advanced mm. because about 40 years ago, mm. I was asked to be on a committee to write a book for Archbishop Little. Mm. So it's a long time ago, and there were 12 of us, mm. and we wrote a book on demonology. Wow. And so I've had many people come to me and my husband, Mark, mm. over the years, and they've been healed. Wow. And, you know, sometimes they have no idea that it's the evil one. Uh-huh. So in the name of Jesus, demons flee. Exactly. And they do. Wow. I can tell you, one person came to me and they crawled up my wall backwards to the ceiling. Wow. And I straight away thought to myself, this is a demon. Mm. So I went, in Jesus' name, get down. Yeah. And, and they fell to the wow. ground. Wow. 
on that note, it's great that Jesus has the power and we don't have to fear, but we'll have a break now. Amen. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Barbara Kirsch. She's one of the leaders of the charismatic prayer group, St. John the Baptist, Fentry Gully. Welcome back. Hi, how are you, Geraldine? It's great. Um, you've experienced God's love in a very powerful way. Hmm, yeah, I have. Yes, and, and through that love, you, you have got involved in the... the euthanasia, like trying to fight euthanasia. Yes. Could you tell us more about your involvement with euthanasia? Yes, well, when the euthanasia bill was going through, we have a friend who at that time was a parliamentarian, mm. and he asked us to come in and to pray, my husband Mark and myself. And so we went in. And what actually happened was he invited us to morning tea in the parliamentary um, dining room. Mm. And this person, I can say John because John's pretty common, he walked past and he invited him to come and sit at the table. Mm. He knew he was going to vote for euthanasia. Mm. And my friend wasn't. Mm. And he said, perhaps you could explain to Barbara why you're going to vote for euthanasia. And he said, well, I just am. And I said, but you have to have a reason for that. Mm. And he said, well... My mother, first of all, died of cancer, and it was mm. a prolonged death. Mm. And then there was my wife, mm. also died of cancer. Right. And I said, well, so your mother, uh, she, didn't, she believed in euthanasia? Mm. And she said, he said, no, definitely not. She was a good Catholic lady that went to Mass every day. Wow. No, she definitely did not believe in it. Hmm. And I said, right, your wife. And he said, no, she went to Mass every Sunday. Hmm. And I said, well, then I'm, I'm not understanding. You're saying your wife, your mother didn't believe in euthanasia. Why do you believe in it? I said, so you're going against what they both believed. Hmm. And he started to cry. Really? Because he, he, he said that they suffered, but then they, were, they, they didn't believe in it. Mm. And he put his hand across the table, oh, wow. and I held on to his oh. hand. And, I, and he said, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, um, my mum, my, um, my you know, when she was dying, the, there was a lot of pressure on her to take more and more pain medication. And she wanted to be clear to be there for the family. But there yes. was a lot of pressure to, 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 to quicken the death up or, you, yes. know, or, or, you know, to make it more progressive. But she wanted to be there for the family. And in fact, even when she didn't have pain, they were saying, oh, she must have pain, yes. have this injection. And yeah, which is, which is a shame because... Um, you know, the the journey to death can be such a beautiful one. Exactly. Me being a, me being a nurse, yes. I know I've helped people's hands. They've, you know, the family members have forgiven each other. They yes. have these deep talks. But to cut that all out, which is what it's sometimes the medical... It's a beautiful moment, yes. really. And, you know, we're not... I don't want to glorify pain, but when the pain is taken away and someone dies from the injection of taking the pain, then it's not a sin. But when people want to inject someone because they're fearful, yes. that's a different thing. Exactly. Yeah. So my husband's just died. Yeah. And so for both of us, we said mm. we are not going to have euthanasia. So we don't know what it's going to be like at the end. So the other one will have to stand in and mm. say, no, we don't want it. Because I did that work for a while being with people who were dying and they used to just, I'm telling you, within three days they were dead because if the family said yes to morphine, they just kept injecting them. 
Mm. And so they came and they said to me, your husband's not going to live. I said, I can see that. And they said, so we'll just give him a little something to help him along. I said, let me be quite clear. And I spoke in this tone. Mm. We, neither one of us believe in euthanasia. So whatever it is, it will be. However, if he's in terrible pain, yes, of course, give it to him. But not unless he's in pain. Mm. And they didn't. Wow. So... I felt I kept up my end of the bargain mm. and he wasn't euthanised. So, mm. you know, it's if we've lived all our life and we've tried to be good Christians, we don't want to be euthanised at the end. We want to have our moment. Yeah, with the family. I want to know exactly what's going on. Mm. Mm. Perhaps throw in a couple of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> have a priest. By my side, if yes. that'll be at all possible. Yes, with my mum, we had lots of prayer groups and guitars and singing. Yes, yeah. it was hard, you know, sometimes seeing her suffer, but through her pain, we discovered Jesus more. Yes, of course. And and we love God more. No, we're not like glorifying pain. No. And also it brought the family closer to God and her too. Yes. Mm. It's a very beautiful time. Yes. Hmm. Um, yeah, and... When people want to get closer to God, what, what prayer can you people say when they want to get closer to Jesus? Well, for myself, I've got some standards. So I dress every morning in the full armour of God. Mm -hmm. Can I do that now? Yes. I'll probably be out of focus. Oh, you can, no, you, I think you better sit, but maybe you can put on the helmet of salvation. I wasn't salvation. going to stand. Okay. I was going to say the shoes of the good news, yes. the belt of truth around our waist, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the two-edged sword of the word. And then I said, what well, to the Lord, what about my back? Yeah. So he covers my back as well. Oh. And Psalm 91, I tell you what, when I've been in very dire situations, I've seen Psalm 91, including uh, six months ago, two black guys, um, apex crowd, uh, they came and they tried to bash my door down. Oh, wow. I thought it was the police telling me Mark had had a slight heart attack. Right. I thought it was the police and I thought, oh, gee, and I ran. And then when I saw this black face, I thought, oh, my God. So I pushed the door as yeah. hard as I could oh, wow. and they ran off. And the police came and they said that she had um, a lady one hour before. Oh. Uh, yeah, you've been fantastic and I love your inspirational stories. We'll have to have you again in next few months or something because you've been great. Thank um, you. Um, I for wish you me. all the best and goodbye and God bless you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay tuned next week. Goodbye and God bless you. Yeah.